Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our presentation on ChemWatch Automatique, our SDS management system. I'm sure you'll enjoy our presentation today. Um, before we get started, if you have any questions, please use the panel. We have a little panel at the bottom of the screen. You can't see it on my screen, but you'll see chat, and you can just enter in the chat window, and then we will collect those questions and report on them at the end and give everybody feedback on that, so be sure to stay for our Q&A. Your speakers today, Tom Hasse, Business Development Manager, will be doing most of the presentation. Myself, I'm Paul Benbow, and I'll be delivering the introdu introduction and closing. And Augusta Brindley will be with us, and she's our technical support person. She'll be answering any questions you have at the end. Today's topics, basically we're going to overview of the ChemWatch SDS lifecycle management process. How we, how we do it, how we're different, how ChemWatch Automatique fits into this equation, how we have a revolutionary way of finding those SDSs, because that's a common complaint we hear is that I'm having to do all the work for my SDS management provider. You know, there's got to be a better way, and, and we feel like we have that better way. So we use web crawlers to find sites. We use artificial intelligence. We actually find places where there are SDSs, and we download all of them. Then we use artificial intelligence to determine which ones are new and if it's an update. And we do all this for our customers free of charge. Um, in addition, you can always submit an SDS. And because we use a crowdsource model, and if anybody else submits that one and you have the same one, you'll get an email alerting you to that. So we also employ crowdsourcing, which we've done that for, for years. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how we review SDS data and how we keep that current and then how our reporting works. And, you know, most at the end of the day, most thing is about reporting and then how the system is working, and that's our powerful reporting will help aid in that. So just a quick one slide on ChemWatch. Uh, been in business almost 30 years, headquartered in Australia. We have uh, multiple offices around the country. We're a very good solution for anybody that does global and a good solution for anybody that just does, does domestic. Uh, we have four offices in the U.S., two in Tennessee, Michigan, and North Carolina. Um, we have about 5,000 chemical manufacturers, users, suppliers in our customer ecosystem. And then seven of the top 20 Fortune 500 companies use ChemWatch. And our markets include anybody that needs to create SDSs or manage SDSs, anybody that works with safety data sheets, that's in our ecosystem. So oil and gas, automotive, electronics, mining, aerospace, government entities, any kind of research institutes, hospitals, universities. So, Tom, would you like to take it from here? Sure. Thank you, Paul, and good morning, everyone. I'm going to switch over to my screen now. Let me know you can if you can see it. You look good, Tom. Great. Thank you, Paul. So what I want to talk about today is our update system. Now we have one in place. We've been using this pushing eight to 10 years. It started as a manual process of quite frankly, visiting our vendor sites, whose SDS we have to see if there's any updates or calling them or emailing them. And then it migrated in the last few years into the web crawler space where <clears throat> we will web crawl sites looking, sites whose vendors we have registered their SDS as part of our customer service. So we crawl these sites and what we, were, what we would be looking for are broken links. When we would find these broken links, we would then update the existing data along with when in the past when we, we did this manually the same way. And then we have extraction teams that work independent of acquisition and update who look at the data, extract it, and we use a QC process to make sure there's no mistakes in transcription, just one points, that type of thing. We don't trust optical scanners. And then the data reviews done actually by our chemists and toxicologists, our science, scientists, sorry, looking for uh, data that might pose an undue hazard to our customer's workplace. 
then we update our database and then our customers can make labels, et cetera, from, from that updated data. Pardon me. So we start our process and we still do, even with our new technology, with, with, a, with a SDS up, up, a registration process where we have a template that acts as an import list that creates the folder structure, we creates what we call requests, excuse me, registration requests. And basically it's the link between the document and the product in our customer's inventory. Then we ask our customers to fill out an inventory list or template, excuse me, that uh, basically merges or matches the SDS name to the location of the inventory itself. So the process is we match it against the inventory, against our master database, looking for updates. So in a sense, we're scrubbing the data. And then we update the customer database if we have something that's newer than they do. We do the extraction, as I mentioned earlier. Excuse me a minute. Sorry, a little slide problem here. And then we update the database accordingly. And we use direct link libraries. What that means, much like CAD data is updated, is our customers, over 5,000 of them, have their own database, firewall from everybody else. The updates go to the master. The master, we use DLLs for documents specific in a customer database that are in the master. And that's how we update our customers in real time. Then we have a registration tool we call ChemWatcher that just basically is a process, or speak, a poll process that um, um, matches up registration with acquisition with the review of the vendor data and any requests for revisions. So then we have timing around this. So our customers, we can uh, commit to them, so to speak, in terms of launch or implementation specific timeframes around rollout plans. And then we keep our customers updated on registration documents that are registered, ones that we've requested, that ones that aren't are, are, have not been registered because the requests haven't been responded to, anything that might be duplicate or not available. So in essence, we're scrubbing the customer's data and making sure that the database we're building is using the latest data. And this just talks about how we'll go out and do the ac actual acquisition, the internet search. You know, we still do some emailing and phone if we don't see anything on the site. So any vendor who doesn't update something, we're, we call them three, four times a year or email them asking specifically, do you have anything new? And then we provide our customers the activities and reports around that. And this is actually what one looks like in terms of acquisition. And then we do the um, extractions. Now we're pulling almost 70 data points per vendor document. So identification, full ingredient formulation, all physical properties, all the DOT related transport data. And then this data is now used for our customers in their database against the SDS. So they can do labeling and filtering, for instance, what's carcinogenic in my, uh, in my collection. <clears throat> And uh, the ingredient formulation, when we extract that, we actually link it to our 6,300 plus regulatory list library. So regulations that affect a set of cast numbers, we've actually done that linking in behind the scenes, so to speak. This is an example of what we're extracting from each vendor SDS. So if, you, if a customer needs to do in-country ingredient-based reporting, like, for instance, like Sarah, they can use the vendor data to do so. <clears throat> in real time. In other words, not pulling up documents and doing copy paste. In the QA process, we usually have three people look at each data point, and what we're looking for is transcription errors. So I had mentioned earlier, starting almost 10 years ago, actually over 10 years ago, excuse me, manual. We're out calling vendors, hey, do you have any updates, uh, emailing them. And then I mentioned earlier, we, we moved into where we're doing web crawling now. So now it's more of a pull process. This has been going on for about three to four years now. So we don't make a phone call per se, or don't wait for a phone call. We're pulling from the site, looking for broken links, still involved a human going out there and ascertaining what changed. Was it an SDS? Because a broken link could be quite frankly, a birthday announcement. So we still have a lot of manual intervention in terms of the update process. Now we're doing it different. So what we've done, this is a totally different way of doing updates. It's using the web, as we've talked about earlier. And, and this process of web crawling, we were doing in the, in the low to mid thousands per week in terms of updating vendor documents. This 
is actually two orders of magnitude faster than what these techniques we're now using. We're actually vi visiting over a million or pulling in updates on over a million SDS weekly now. We're still doing web crawling, except we got some smarts behind it now. Instead of just looking for a broken link, what we're doing is we're using AI, basically some deep learning algorithms, very similar to what's used, for instance, in search algorithms, where it's basically matrix multiplication and data sets. We're doing the same thing here. What we're doing is, is using, let's say, rules of thumb and past experiences to help point us, basically, to the SDS on the site. <clears throat> Excuse me. So instead of just looking for a broken link for a document, we're actually pulling on a vendor site all the SDS when we web crawl. So we're doing over a million a week doing it this way. All changes, just like we've done in the past, are always updated, or sorry, identified and reported to you monthly. So the same process is in place, but instead of just a broken link analysis, now we're using some deep learning techniques very similar to what the search engines use to tell us where to look. Our update report, again, the, the we'll call it the inputs and outputs haven't changed. It's just we got a high speed process in between now. So our update status reports that we send to our customers still do the same. You tell us weekly, monthly, or quarterly, and what they look like is this. Basically, so what you're seeing there are actually links, hot links. So what this is saying is in a specific period of time for a dear client is what materials changed. We, by the way, on over 38 million SDS now have a ChemWatch number, a unique identifier that every document's assigned, irregardless of the user, part number, or vendor number. This is our way of finding the document come uh, heck or high water. So this lists, again, the document that's changed, the supplier name, its folder, its location in your folder structure, language, country. These two links will take you to the flat file. In other words, this is the previous SDS. This is the new one. And this compare report link, if you click on that, it takes you to a digital compare report that we create that shows you in red, basically in column form, this what's changed from before from the old versus new SDS. These are HTMLs that are sent to our customers. So a right click and a save as puts it on a hard drive at a site or a personal computer or however you want to save it. But what this is showing is behind the scenes, basically we're taking care of business. This is showing you what we're doing in terms of pulling in updates for our customers. And again, this is for a lot of folks, they'd like to see well exactly what did change this shows them. So we've been talking about SDS ingredients. We do the same in the regulatory side. Um, we have over 25 regulatory compliance people in 21 countries that basically do nothing but monitor changes to regulations. So that process we saw before pulling in all this SDS, we're doing the same in the regulatory side, but we have a lot of human intervention in terms of looking at what has changed and then what we're doing is sending out reports to our customers showing them what regulations have changed that affect the ingredients of their materials. So we will do this weekly, monthly, quarterly. This is the best slide of them all. Everything I've just described free of charge. This is something we provide for all our clients. It's included in every subscription. And this whole process, what we call ChemWatch Automatique, drives our chemical management platform. So our platform really is in three legs of a stool, we'll call it. And one of them we've just been talking about is the data. So we manage over 38 million SDS now, vendor SDS. And in our 6,300 plus regulatory list library database, that's from 89 countries and affects over a million and a half substances. I mentioned earlier our own people. We have over 80 now uh, located in 21 countries, chemists, toxicologists, industrial hygienists, that look, as I mentioned earlier, about the data review or, or the regulatory changes, and also speak at conferences and, and <clears throat> keep an eye 
quite frankly, on the regulatory world because regulatories are added daily. Our platform, we use Amazon Web Services. So this data, your data, or client's data, excuse me, is hosted and managed and fully scalable under their platform. So the IT costs of managing, excuse me, SDS data, whether you have your own people pulling it or not, the actual data points, including regulations, has to be owned and managed by somebody. And we do that free of charge. And I've seen some studies embedded versus cloud-based management of data. And over, over a five-year period, in year five, the maintenance cost on embedded is equal to the implementation cost, whereas a SaaS application is zero at that point. So data, let's do a little deep dive. 38 million vendor SDS, fully searchable, indexable. Uh, over 6 million of those now have four or 67 data points you can find or pull from the documents. We do our own, we call them gold SDS. These are review SDS. It's independent authoring of the chemical data. So for instance, benzene, we don't take a vendor's benzene document and reauthor it. We do our own <clears throat> authoring independent of benzene. So this is authored by our people, our own chemical scientists. And the, the authoring is focused on worker safety and hazard communications. So for instance, section eight, it doesn't say chemical impervious gloves. We tell you the glove material type. We also tell you the type do not use. And respirator isn't HEPA equivalent. We tell you the part number under ANSI to use against the particulate size. So it's very specific on worker safety. Why are we doing all this? Because a lot of vendors don't. And they require you or cl our clients to do this on the vendor's data. We feel chemical scientists do a better job of the analysis. Now, if company has those on staff, great. A lot of companies don't. So again, independent review of that chemical data. These are active data sheets. I mentioned the 67 data points, or sorry, data points from the vendor SDS. I showed you the ingredients and physical properties. We do over 300 on the goal. An example being section 15, we fill that out with the regulations that affect that chemical in 93 country formats. So if you have a vendor document that needs, that's US English, but needs to be used in Mexico, you can use a gold and translate it to Mexico, Spanish, Mexico country format. So all 16 sections get automatically populated, including the links to our regulatory lists. Library, excuse me, which is 6,300 regulatory databases now growing. We had about 20 a week. Um, again, updated by an international team, over a million and a half substances now. We also, again, we mentioned authoring. <clears throat> we have a GHS classification database with our authoring product that has over 250,000 classified substances in there. I think it's over 30,000 chemical phrases as well. So lots of data, very rich database. So with the vendor data, so I mentioned the 60 or 70, 67 to 70 data points per document, three stage QC. What this document is showing you, we can actually offer chemical data in three forms, depending on what our clients are trying to do. Um, so I mentioned the vendor data. You also can use user generated data. So you, actually there's data you can extract with this table. You can put it. So in other words, the vendor may not have an H code that you want to use. You can actually put it in this document and use it as part of your chemical analysis. Then I mentioned our goal earlier. So these are three pieces. These are three um, data sets of a given material or chemical. As you can see here as an example, this lubricant. But what I want to highlight to the audience is no data set overrides the other. If they sit equivalent in the database, you as a user have a choice on which one to use by using our report generator or our filters. Again, it's taking vendor data and expanding it so our clients have choices where vendor doesn't offer molecular weight as an example, our gold document does. So I mentioned the goal review. I'm not going to spend a lot more time on this. This is the third time I've talked about it. But one of the things you can do with it in terms of this focus on worker safety and communication is it's an active data sheet where you can create individual PDFs on, we call them safety cards, really worker safety sheets, PPE, first aid, firefighting. So you can see an example over here. 
you can create a one page PPE document. Basically, it tells them what to do and how to do it. This document can be converted to 47 languages as well. Expertise, I mentioned the 80 chemical experts, hygienists, regulatory folks. We actually have a couple doctors on staff as well. And then we author with our authoring tool about 5,000 documents a month independently for some of the world's largest companies. I mentioned a couple there. So um, we tie all this data together, quite, quite frankly, on our platform. Our platforms, plug and play. What does that mean? Well, you can have label making next to SDS management and also an authoring tool all on the same platform. They act seamlessly. As you author data, you can move it right into the SDS management structure, file structure that you've built. So it's all plug and play. We use Microsoft.net. So all the applications that sit on this platform work seamlessly. Microsoft.net's been around since the mid 80s, very stable and very solid. Cloud base, mentioned earlier, SaaS, minimal IT required. What we've been talking about is a subscription based service where you see the data, so to speak, and the user screen with PDFs that you can download and do analysis on. The data is also available in what we call an application program interface. So uh, you can pull data in. Basically, the script sets up a trigger where you pull data, let's say, based on CAS number or material name, you pull data points into an existing IT uh, structure, mostly uh, used for interacting with an existing database. Chemical data with a global reach, uh, 93 countries, I mentioned 47 languages, but these are country specific. So you can notice Icelandic um, is for Iceland, go figure, but you don't use that for Indonesia, right? So English is the default for all 93 countries, but we have specific languages uh, based on uh, each country. So I'd like now to turn it over to Paul and he'll tell you more about our stuff. Thanks, Paul. Paul, are you there? <clears throat> you see my screen? Tom, yes. You see my screen? Great. Anyway, we have a variety of products and bundles. Um, so basically, our backpack is our basic vendor management system. Gold FFX is basically adding chemical inventory, SDS management, risk assessments. And then Comarches is our full-blown, you know, everything we have package. So basically, these are different bundles of our offering, and we can create a custom bundle. Just depends on your needs. So Smart Suite is our mobile SDS management package, and then DGen is our labeling tool. So in a second, we're going to talk a little bit about Smart Suite. Uh, we talked a minute about Galleria Chemica. That's our regulatory database, and then within that, we have the ability to author SDSs and that uses our authority tool. So to expand a little bit on our mobile offering, we don't talk about that a lot and it's really good. I'm gonna take just a second, to talk about that. So on a smartphone, be it iOS or Android, you basically can look in your folder. In this case, I've got a image of a phone screen that shows several folders. So if I were to click on chemical store here, that would open up that folder and I could see there could be a subfolder under that or I could actually look at the exact chemicals. So if I type on benzium chloride, that would open up that SDS and I would actually see that. And I can take the two fingers on my phone and basically just expand that and zoom and transfer that around. So pretty much the phone app is very easy. It's secure. It uses um, Android or iOS, as I mentioned. Um, we can also do chemical risk assessments in the field, or you can view other documents. So in this example, I'm showing one of our mini SDSs or a safety card. You can do the same zooming capability. On the mini SDS, it shows you health hazard information, what PPE to use, you know, a lot of really good information. But you can also perform a risk assessment. So on the mobile phone, you can actually be on site, you know, enter in the chemical, enter the conditions which that chemical is being used all the settings, and then you can actually generate a risk assessment right there in your hand while you're on the on the site. And uh, 
So another nice thing our mobile solution does, it gives you the ability to share. So I can, you know, once I have a document on my screen, it does the standard stuff most phones do where I can email, text. So if I have a worker there at another location, they need an SDS, and maybe I'm on at another location, I can actually pull it up on my phone and then forward it to their phone, and they can have access to that information without me being in the office. So I think one thing about our mobile device is it's easy to use. It kind of liberates you and it empowers your employees to, you know, self-service, but if they can't find something or you need to intervene, you can just about do everything on our package from the mobile phone. You cannot author an SDS. That's only one thing you cannot do from our mobile app. Another tool we probably should spend more time talking about is our offline archive. With just a few mouse clicks, you can create basically a very simple to use HTML page that you can put on a server, you can put on a flash drive. So it's kind of like a, a book without printing it out. So if you simply key in at the top, you see little tick marks, you could actually key in the document name and it will reduce the list of options below. Or you can key in the vendor name, and it'll filter by that or by the part number. And then after you simply click in, you know, enter a piece of information in there, for example, here I type Burl, and it just narrowed it down to those. And I can simply click on that, and it will basically present me with that document. And you can run this from a smartphone, tablet, or, you know, from a, a uh, any kind of a Chrome, Safari, Windows, you know. So anybody that can load an HTML file, which is almost everything, can use our offline archive. And it's been a great problem solver for people that may have limited connectivity. Maybe they're on a ship, they're uh, out in the middle of nowhere doing drilling, and there's not internet connectivity. Our offline archive has proved to be a very effective solution, and people like it because it's very, very easy. Okay, so that was just a quick uh, foray into our mobile solution and our offline archive. So at this point, I'd like to go ahead and open it up for question and answers. And uh, Tom, I'll go ahead and get you going and Gusty. Okay. Tom, do you see any questions asked? Excuse me, Paul. I'm just actually reading them as we speak. Yeah. I. Uh, Gusty, Gusty, would you... Um, could you jump in? Maybe I see you've answered two of them. Okay. So we have a question from the audience, and it was, are you expecting that SDS is updated at some specific frequency? So yes, with regard to our SDS updates, we again have web crawlers that uh, rove the vendor sites daily, and we are able to visit approximately 250,000 vendor sites per day. Um, again, as Tom mentioned during the presentation, we've developed proprietary software that is next to none, and essentially it reviews the SDS line by line once it finds it on the vendor SDS, and it will compare it to the old SDS that we have stored in our full database or against the one stored in your own folders. Um, afterward, a report is created and it's sent out to you, the customer, and it highlights all of the areas in the SDS that has changed. And this could be as simple as a due date or it could be um, something more advanced such as changes in classification, which would require retraining of your workers um, who use that material. So that's just our web crawling process. We also, as Tom mentioned, um, have a manual process that is used when the vendor SDS is not available on the web, the web, I mean. And so this manual process is simply just calling and emailing. We have a full staff that is equipped to do this, and we call these vendors up to three times a month on your behalf. Afterward, we contact you, the customer, with monthly reports, letting you know what we ha have successfully found or what we were unable to find or obtain from the vendor. Okay. So that answers the first question. We also have another question that doesn't really necessarily revolve around SDS updates, but it uh, pertains more to our authoring tool. Do you author a mixture SDS as well as substance SDS? Yes. So we do provide in-house authoring services, and so our chemists 
could author that substance SDS for you um, as a gold SDS. Additionally, as Tom mentioned, we do have an authoring tool built into our package. And this essentially allows you to draw from our database in order to create a mixture SDS within five minutes. So again, it just draws information from our database. It pulls classification information, regulatory information, and phrasing, and it's able to produce that document within seconds. Additionally, it's also able to produce labels, mini SDS, and other types of reports, as Tom discussed, all in the background. So all of these are pr produced and formatted for you. You do not need to do anything on your end. The tool makes it quite easy for you to author that SDS. Thanks, Gus. Those are great, uh, great answers. I have a question here. Um, do you have the ability to partner with consultants regarding SDS updates on behalf of their clients? Well, the way we do it, and we work with a few consulting companies right now, not necessarily as a partner, but quite frankly, as a license holder. And <clears throat> what we recommend that they do is get a license of the chemicals that their clients use. Um, Typically, these are very common substances they can use for other clients. We provide all those updates for free for them. As to partnering with somebody that's independent of owning a license, but yet we do updates for, uh, I'll have to ask our upper management. The good news is we're privately owned, and when I say upper management, I, I'm basically speaking to the owner. So, uh, by the way, all answers we're providing, we will send out to everyone as a question and answer sheet. And I have one here, and I, I think, Gusty, you might be the best person to answer this. Can you explain the difference between VGD and UGD? So I was wondering okay. if you could expand on that a little bit. Okay. Uh, VGD stands for Vendor Generated Data. And as Tom um, and Paul touched on during the webinar, we have a full team of people who do data extraction off of our vendor SDSs in our full library. And we do this on a per diem basis for customers um, that pay for that service. So what that means is um, instead of that being a flat file or a static document, document, just an image of that vendor manufacturer SDS, we actually have a team that goes in and extracts or indexes data off of the document itself. And we index 67 data points. And because that's indexed, it's fluid, and we can actually manipulate that data and move it um, and use it in different areas of the software. So for instance, we could use it as a basis for our risk assessment. Um, because we have extracted the classification data, we are able to extrapolate a uh, a, a risk uh, with that or a, uh, a hazard, I mean, with that particular chemical, and then we can perform a risk assessment. Likewise, we're also able to push that data into Excel reports. And additionally, we can also communicate with other systems that you might use within your organization to push data or pull data um, into that system. Um, and again, it would just be data that you're interested in pulling into that system. So there's a lot of things that you can do with that VGD data. We also have UGD data, which is user generated data. And instead of having our team of data extraction experts um, do the data extraction and send it through a quality control process, you would be extracting that data or those data points of interest off of the SDS using our proprietary UGD tool. And essentially, you would be using the same tool that our experts use to extract the data off the SDS. We make that available to you. It's just more manual work involved on your end in order to do that. And of course, you would have to do all of the QA associated with the data extraction. And UGD says private to only that person that entered it. Exactly. Yeah, so, okay. I have a question. Uh, do you advise clients to use the SDS that your staff author or, or sorry, to replace vendor SDS or to supplement them? We don't advise them to do anything specific at all. 
it's entirely up to them, as you saw with those three data sets, it's entirely up to them what to use and how to use that SDS-related data. Um, to give you some, I guess we'll, call, we'll say some uh, use history, most clients use vendor data because, quite frankly, vendors are liable for those results. Where they'll use our product is to complement specifically on language translation or country format translation. Some clients use our physical properties to complement what the vendor doesn't have. An example would be vapor pressure. That tends to be experimental. A lot of vendors don't list that. But if you're doing air emissions reporting, you got to have that. <clears throat> our worker safety sheets are used quite a bit. One thing we did not talk much about, we have what's called a mini SDS. So that gold SDS represents the same chemical. Let's say that you have a vendor SDS on, and typically those two documents might be 10 pages each. The mini SDS is one page. And we designed it specifically for workers to read it quickly and easily. So there's icons, there, this, the phrasing is very short, specific around um, what to do with PPE. It has all the labels, sorry, all the placards you'd see on a, um, on a label, <coughs> excuse me, regarding storage and transport, OELs, that, that type of information. So it's typically, I'd say most often used to supplement vendor data. Great, hey, thanks, Tom. Uh, are there any more questions or shall we move to the next slide? I guess let's just. Oh, all of the other questions can be answered via email. If we're running out of time, you can go ahead and move on to the next slide. Okay, great. Uh, basically, the next slide is just talking about our next webinar on January 23rd. We'll actually be doing a deep dive into our authority product, SDS authoring. And what makes our product unique is we do all 16 sections for you because we leverage our regulatory database and our you know, powerful database of products. We can allow you to create SDSs pretty quickly. And then we do all 16 sections. And then you can move between 93 countries and we still populate all 16 sections and we do this in 47 languages. So to move between countries takes about five mouse clicks. So it's very easy to author a document. You can leave it in English and if you need it in German, Japanese, Chinese, Taiwanese, Th Thailand, literally it's five mouse clicks and you can have that document. And we do repopulate section 15 per that country. So that's gonna be a really good webinar if you ever you know, need to do an occasional SDS or you do a lot of SDSs, do a lot of authoring, I think you'll find it very informative. So that being said, uh, you know, we appreciate your attendance today and we will be sending out a recording of this webinar as well as the slide deck. And please don't hesitate to give us a call back because we you know, love to talk with our end users and our customers. Thank you so much. Hope you have a good day. Hey, Paul, can you 